Sorry, I'm just getting on now. Dad come home in the midst of me about to get on. So, I'm on now. So, I'm going to be honest. I didn't know what I was going to be talking about. And the Lord just kept confirming. And so, I'm basically going to, like, if anybody knows Epcot back in the day, it's now the Frozen ride. It used to be the, the Viking one where it'd be like, go back. So, I'm going back. But at the end of the day, our testimonies aren't for us. They're for other people, to bless other people. At the end of the day, it has nothing to do with us. So the confirmation that confirmed that I was supposed to give this actually popped up yesterday on um, Facebook, October 1st, which I believe there's no coincidences when it comes to the things of the Lord. If something pops up and it's anything to do with the Lord, like a memory, whatever it may be, that's the Lord confirming to you, especially when it comes to his word. Sorry, I'm writing in Raven. So, um, I'm going to read this post and then I'm going to talk about a verse. When I came to D2K2, I had been recently set free from depression. I had it since I was 15. 15 was the first time I had these bad days and was prescribed on depression medicine. It didn't help. I suffered for years, debilitating days. I wouldn't get out of bed, not wanting to wake up. And in my 20s, it only got worse. I searched for anything that would make me feel better and none of the things of the world helped. And then late one night, the enemy came in like a flood. And that night, I thought this was going to be my life. And that night, I cried out to the Lord. And that night, I saw the Lord in the midst of my depression. He changed my life that night. And a few years later, D2K2, the Lord gave me a word. I was going to be able to talk to people and encourage them with my testimony. And I was behind the scenes and would encourage, but really wasn't giving my testimony and telling them how I overcame depression. So at D2K3, I had a word spoke over me how I need to be more bold, and I struggled with that. I still was being held captive with the thoughts of my past. And the Lord gave me 2 Corinthians 10.5 to pray over my thought patterns. And the year leading up to D2K4, the Lord dealt with me and doors started to open to give him my testimony and being bold. But finally at D2K4, I stepped into my future and gave the devil a black eye and let the Lord use me. I finally stepped into my calling. I'm so thankful for D2K because I finally see myself the way the Lord sees me, and I know he isn't done with me yet. I'm finally living the life he had for me, a willing vessel wanting to be used for his kingdom. I'm excited for the future and will tell the world how he changed my life, how there's nothing in this world that will satisfy you like Jesus. Ken, he delivered me out of that pit of despair, and I know I'm fearfully and wonderfully made, and D2K has gave me all these tools to remind the enemy whose I am. I'm an overcomer of depression, and so much more. This is a part of my testimony, and I thank you, D2K. I am forever changed and will continue to give God all the glory. Can't wait for D2K5. So, I think it only popped up in the memories because D2K is actually going on right now, having FOMO, wish I was there. But, I actually wrote this on October 1st, 2017. And we're in 2024 now, going into 2025, and I don't want to rave and rant. I want to believe that people can see what the Lord has done in me and through me and all the things that's happened from the moment I made that post till now. And um, I'm going to get into the Second Corinthians 10, 5 first, but I saw this today, more confirmation. And the fact that this is called Warfare Wednesday, I feel like it's very fitting. And it was a post, I ended up sharing it on my Instagram, and it said, The end of the year comes with a lot of attacks. If you don't learn how to open your mouth in prayer and praise, you'll be a victim. And I was like, the little emoji, like, <gasps> but um, it's the truth. And so I'm going to read Second Corinthians 10.5. Casting down imaginations and every high thing that exalts itself against the knowledge of God, bringing every thought into captivity to the obedience of Christ. Jesus saved my life. He saved all our lives. But that verse, truly, what it says, it transformed my mindset. It literally took all the raggy bammy thoughts that I would have and all the thoughts that never lined up with the Word of God, and it would make me instantly be reminded that those thoughts are of the enemy. Those are not thoughts of the Lord. The Lord at the end of the day has plans to prosper us and not to harm us. Yes, the weapons may form, but they're not going to prosper. And I can sit here and tell you just because of that one verse, I'm where I am now because I took the thoughts captive and I overcame them because of the Lord. But what I love the most about 
the Bible and the Word of God is. We literally have anything in here for any attack, for any warfare. But I have one verse that changed my life. Just one verse. Imagine what the whole Word of God can do for your life. And that's why I'm obsessed with the Bible, but I guess it's a good obsession. But this is something that truly transformed my life. Just this one verse. But if I could leave you with this, because I think I'm definitely going over. I think it was only supposed to be like five to ten minutes. Is the promise is permanent. We can't allow our feelings to dictate our actions or allow our feelings to base anything off of our feelings. And also, I just want to read three through four. It says, for though we walk in the flesh, we do not war according to the flesh. For the weapons of our warfare are not carnal, but mighty through God to the pulling down of strongholds. And if anybody has the spiritual warfare Bible, there's a thing all about strongholds. But I just don't want to be like too much, but maybe I'll read it real quick case you don't have the spiritual warfare bible strongholds paul speaks of warfare and satanic attacks on believers in second corinthians 10 through three through four using the term wow sorry using the term stronghold the greek word means fortress strongholds are the way the enemy gains access and control in a christian's life a stronghold is a fortress of wrong thinking that can harbor a demonic entity this demonic entity can launch attacks from the house our wrong thinking has constructed for him yes indeed we can actually put a gun in the enemy's hand for him to shoot us habits and addictions many times are simply demonically infested strongholds this is not demon possession but demon infestation christians can be oppressed depressed tempted harassed and buffeted but they cannot be possessed though believers can never be totally overtaken by satan and his demons the sad reality is that many are harassed constantly by wicked forces whenever the flesh is in control of a Christian's life. Demons are given a place in the believer's mind. This place is usually an unconfessed sin, an unbroken bad habit, obsession, or a wrong attitude. Simply stated, the believer has embraced a lie. Second Corinthians 10.5 says, Casting down imaginations and every high thing that exalts itself against the knowledge of God. The battle rages in the thinking process of a believer. These wrong ideas, bad attitudes, false assumptions, wrong traditions, and lies can become a doorway for demons into our lives. So, I'm leaving you with this, the Word of God, life-changing, not only will, not only make you a new creation, but anything you need is in here, in the Bible. So, I hope I made sense, and I hope this blesses someone, and I'm actually going to close with prayer. Heavenly Father, my God, I don't know who's going to be coming on here, Lord, but you know every thought that concerns every single person on here. And I just pray, Lord Jesus, my God, that they surrender everything, my God. That they, I pray 2 Corinthians 10, 5 over their mind, Lord Jesus. I want them to know, Heavenly Father, my God, that you're not done with them. That all those thoughts are a lie of the enemy. Because at the end of the day, the enemy only attacks when the Lord's moving the most in your life and when he has a plan for your life. The Lord plans to do far anything you could possibly imagine or think of truly Ephesians 3 20 overflow my God and I just pray for that person my God that feels lost bound whatever it may be that this isn't it for them my God I pray Jesus that you go to them right now you come for them Heavenly Father my God and you pull them up out of that pit of despair like you did for me and we just give you all the honor and the glory and the praise my God forever and ever amen all right thank you to Helen Ann and Alicia I love yous and thank you for giving me an opportunity I don't take it lightly and I just pray that more open doors for every single person and a boldness because I didn't have a boldness and it's only Jesus that I have a boldness to be able to get on and even talk about anything. So I just pray that people realize how valuable they are for the kingdom and that their testimony matters, that their voice matters and they need to speak life into every situation. Like his word says, life and death is the power of the tongue. And you just speak life. We love my family. We love Romans 417. And I truly believe that you can speak things into existence when it lines up with the word of God. So just realize how valuable the word is. This is all you need. So, all right. Thank you again. Bye.